question. Um, in our previous session, we, which we held in German with Marina Weisband, one of the last questions was, how can you actually keep up with that rapid pace of um, digital development, of technology development? Because the big question was, at the moment, it seems technology is developing so fast and not in the desired direction where it's forcing um, a little, or where it's causing a little bit a split in the society, and it seems that we really need to up our game and educate people ourselves much more in using those tools to our benefit. And that applies for digitalization, but it also applies for a much bigger challenge crisis, even the climate crisis. I think we simply do not have enough literacy yet, and the world is just developing so fast that you cannot stop learning. What you're taught in school might be relevant, but not enough for the future we'll find ourselves in. So how can we create learning environments that enable us to keep on learning after we quit university? That's the question for our next session. And our next speaker, Prikena Zimaki, might have some answers, hopefully. Um, welcome, Prikena. Good afternoon to everyone. I hope you can hear me well. We can hear you perfectly. Perfect. Um, um, yes, uh, let me introduce you quickly. You're the co-chair yes. of the European Economic and Social Committee Liaison Group of Civil Society, also a member of ARC8, the expert group on inclusive learning and teaching in a digital world. Um, you've been involved in a lot of student, European student organizations beforehand, and it seems like now um, you, you love that job so much, you kind of like transferred it into the lifelong student approach. So looking forward um, to hearing your insights in the next 25 minutes. Well, thank you for the introduction. Very interesting. Uh, indeed, uh, it became a bit of my lifelong uh, learning and lifelong mission to work for a civil society in the education and training uh, sector. Uh, I'm glad to be here with you today and I congratulate you for the festival. Very interesting. Uh, I regret that I cannot be in Berlin with you. It seems very exciting, the program, especially tonight with DJs and uh, parties. So I wish you all uh, really good celebrations. Um, well, I will try to, to provide some answers, also I, I, we obviously don't have the solutions to uh, what is in front of us when it comes to lifelong learning and education and training in this uh, context of digital and uh, green transition. But uh, what I would like to, to maybe uh, share with you is how we do it at Lifelong Learning Platform. So maybe I would introduce first the, the organization I work for and then how uh, do we see uh, these learning environments in the 21st century. So first of all, who is the Lifelong Learning Platform? It's the European umbrella organization that gathers over 40 European networks that represent the main education and training providers. And what they have in common is this holistic vision to education, uh, where we believe that learning happens from cradle to grave. So uh, it starts as early in our lives and it never ends. Uh, and we try to do so by facilitating European-wide cross-sectoral cooperation among civil society organizations, but also education training providers to voice their concerns at the EU level, but also at the member states level. And in the next slide, in this slide, you see beautiful and colorful logos of some of our member organizations. You would see there are a lot of youth organizations, but a lot of higher education networks as well, uh, students' associations, history teachers, teachers' associations. Um, as well as regional authorities um, uh, and language learning platforms or um, sport and cultural clubs. Uh, and so there is basically a variety of uh, um, providers that uh, represent different learning environments. Uh, what I mean by that is that you have obviously the more formal education providers, the schools, higher education, but also uh, non-formal education providers, especially specifically in the adult education sector, but also in the youth uh, sector or uh, culture and, and sports. And then you also have informal learning providers, so so community learning centers and community organizations that are actually also providing opportunities for young and adults to learn new skills and develop their uh, personal and professional uh, careers. Um, 
in the next slide, which is the topic of the um, of my intervention, I would like to to see how I can actually bring more um, um, knowledge or insights on how we see the lifelong learning environments in the new green and digital transition. Uh, as you said, I'm the director of the lifelong learning platform for the past five years, and. Um, one of the things that I learned and I want to share with you as well is that we don't have the solutions, obviously, but uh, we try to look at how we can change mindsets, how we can shift mindsets, the crisis, especially the current, the current and the, the last year's crisis have indeed raised the question and how to um, modernize education and training systems, how to make them more open and more lifelong learning systems uh, and how then that that requires obviously a, a, a shift in mindsets. And uh, specifically on the issues of learning environments, in 2019, we have our we had our first position paper where some of the main messages uh, of uh, really um, modernizing learning environments were the following ones that I would like to also share with you. First, the learners' needs. Uh, we need to um, completely change the way education and training systems are built by focusing more and more on learners' needs. We often Often tend to uh, focus on education uh, at uh, basically transferring knowledge theories uh, and uh, very little is done in how this actually um, is uh, adapted to the needs of the learners and also to the knowledge that the learners comes in in the classroom. So we need to see how um, this uh, teaching and learning is actually adapted to the learners' needs. And learners are very diverse. Uh, we tend to have a one-fit uh, uh, kind of approach approach, but uh, we do have a very uh, diverse um, learners um, population and uh, the current education and training systems, the current learning environments do not necessarily, um, let's say, reflect this diversity. Um, another aspect that uh, is also very important when speaking about learning environments is also how to make education and training systems more flexible, how a learner uh, can move from one uh, learning to another, from one system to another. And that means also how its uh, competence, uh, the competences and knowledge are um, recognized and, and validated from one system to another. Um, but also another aspect of uh, today's learning environment uh, that we see more and more developing is also how the uh, education and training providers are more rooted to the community and are working better and closer to the community and are centered to the needs of the community while of course looking at the global challenges uh, local um, realities are very important and uh, getting closer to the learners where the learners are uh, it's very important uh, in making learning environments more accessible Another important aspect is also the, the role of educators, of teachers. Um, and uh, we see them more as uh, future facilitators that are not there, the, uh, the absolute, um, let's say, uh, knowledgeable person in, in, in the classroom, uh, but they bring a fundamental knowledge and facilitate and, and, and facilitate, uh, let's say, uh, learners to create new knowledge. Uh, so the role of teachers also is changing in this new learning environment. Uh, and it means also uh, more uh, training for teachers to adapt to these uh, new, um, let's say, uh, dynamics of the classrooms. Uh, but we also uh, see uh, learning environments of uh, the 21st century and the future uh, being more participatory. So this means also uh, having more dynamic um, formats that involve students, involve learners much more in the um, in, in, in the in the teaching and learning itself. Um, another important uh, aspect of of this learning environment is also the valuing of all learning. It's very important to value the different learning that and different knowledge attitudes and skills that the learners come with in the classroom. Uh, all of us have different knowledge that we come with from our social economic backgrounds. 
uh, and uh, this needs to be valued. And this is not only acquired in the formal system, but also outside uh, through non-formal and informal learning and needs to be valued as well. Uh, Another uh, dimension of uh, this new learning environments is also how uh, we look at co-creation, how uh, the education training systems are becoming spaces for co-creation, uh, co-creation with the students, with the teachers, with the uh, governance uh, of the education training um, institution. And um, the last two points that are also very important, one of which is also part of the missions of the um, lifelong learning platform, is actually the cross-sectoral cooperation. Uh, we promote more and more cross-sectoral cooperation. We believe that all education and training providers, being them formal, non-formal, and informal, should work more together uh, and learn from each other. Um, and this is, we have seen in the last years, that has been very important. And the last but not least, the new learning environments have to focus on transversal skills, on uh, skills for life, uh, life goals, as we call them, that are very important in today's context and as we speak of the green and the digital transition. Moving to the next slide, you were more interested to know, of course, on how we uh, adapt to the green and digital transition. And as you can see from these pictures, I, I just picked some of them that uh, I found it interesting. Uh, there's a lot of questioning around the green and the digital transitions. There are obviously great um, opportunities and great challenges as well for our society and especially for our education and training system. We can make... Um, grow plants within our rooms or within our um, living spaces, uh, obviously, but we need to look at it in a much broader um, way. Uh, it's much more complicated than what the pictures uh, show us. Uh, and I would like to, uh, to share with you what have been our insiders at LLP uh, in the last year. So our reflection on, on this transition for us was not a new uh, transition. We started working on this uh, a lot longer and uh, I will share with you what were the main messages we came with um, on this. When it comes to the green uh, transition, uh, we would prefer to focus rather on the sustainable uh, transition. So looking uh, beyond the just environment aspects of the greening, so looking at the social dimension and uh, the sustainable societies, how we can build sustainable societies through lifelong learning. And uh, the whole, uh, let's say, green transition has brought a lot of attention to lifelong learning. And uh, it has never been so important uh, to promote learning at all ages and beyond graduation, beyond higher education, but also how important has been the transformation power and how important is the transformative power of learning. Uh, this is also part of the SDGs uh, and it's a, a very important goal indeed uh, that we need to, to, to take into account. Um, I just have a citation here, which I think it's very uh, interesting uh, that we used in our position paper as well, when it speaks about the volume of education continues to increase, yet so do population, exhaustion of resources and the dangers of ecological catastrophe. Uh, if still more education is to save us, it would have to be uh, education of a different kind, an education that takes us into the depth of things. And I think this is uh, summarizing what we highlight in our position paper as well, that we need to rethink uh, education as it stands and look uh, deeper into how we face social, social challenges uh, and societal issues through education and training. And there are many uh, new um, changes um, in, in different uh, member states that are trying to embrace this multidisciplinary approach, for example, to problem solving and how to integrate that into education and training. And this is especially important when it comes to uh, sustainable development. 
uh, on the digital revolution uh, already in 2017, because yeah, the whole digital revolution didn't start uh, last year, uh, didn't start two, three years ago. Uh, it started years and years ago, and uh, we were trying to raise the concerns uh, and on the fact that indeed we were not prepared, Europe was not prepared to this sort of say revolution, and uh, the pandemic just showed us has, how unprepared we were uh, to embrace uh, new technologies, especially when it comes to education and training. Um, in our position paper, when we when we reflected on how to reimagine education for the digital age, some of the key messages which I, I find very interesting to share with you, uh, it's um, it's the following ones that you see on on the slide. Uh, first, it's not digital technology that creates social change. People do. What that means is that it's very important to to invest in people first. Uh, and of course on technology as well uh, in order to innovate but at the end of the day who would actually make it possible and who would actually create change is the people so it's very important to 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 invest in it and to to highlight this this dimension of uh, people-centered investment in the digital revolution rather than technology as of, uh, as itself um Another uh, key message of, on that position paper was the digital divide gap, as long as there is the basic skills gap. Uh, we believe that a lot of more complex and higher ordered competences are actually um, that are necessary, let's say, uh, for efficient use of technology um, are rooted into basic skills basic skills and Europe has major issue uh, of people lacking basic skills and for as long as we don't um, address the issue of basic skills uh, we cannot fix the digital divide gap and that will mean the following message which is technology is empowerment tool for the already empowered and this is also to say that um, Unfortunately, the highly qualified individuals today have access to more uh, technology and more uh, digital um, um, education, so they can actually um, uh, may have a privileged, uh, let's say, access to digital education and digital uh, skills. So this is very uh, important to mention. And the last point, which I also think um, is very important, is to look at the uh, target groups that are more at risk uh, of safety. And this is uh, people that uh, need more attention when it comes to safe navigation. So ensuring safety in the digital water is very important. Uh, and the very last, uh, let's say, uh, message that I wanted to share with you that the Lifelong Learning Platform is looking at at the moment is how we move uh, from uh, uh, this um, skills focus uh, type of education and training policies to um, um, actually looking at how we can rediscover and discover the joy of learning and how can we motivate learners to continue learning because it's very important uh, while we uh, can, uh, of course, um, invite uh, individuals and citizens to continue learning throughout life uh, is to look at what motivates them to, to learn and to continue learning and were they satisfied with their education and training system so far? Would they go back to learning? Would they go back the same way they were before? And so it's very important that we, uh, we look at the, 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 the joy of learning as something that we have to also considering our policies, not only looking uh, at, um, at, at the skills and education as for uh, as a tool for um, improving um, labor markets policies. And in this year um, uh, theme, we are focusing at how to change education systems by looking at new ways to value learning and new ways to value learning is also new ways of assessment that are focusing more uh, at the well-being of individuals. I think it's very important that people and citizens feel, uh, uh, feel well, especially this was important during the, the pandemic. 
uh, we who we are facing and we will still uh, face the consequences on people's mental health uh, due to this pandemic. And I think it's very important that education and training systems and learning environments take this into account and rethink assessment methods. We cannot continue to use standardized testing systems. We need to look at more formative systems and methods that uh, look at self-assessment, look at group assessment, look at different var different ways of assessing knowledge, skills, and attitudes um, that uh, learners are acquiring in different learning environments. And we see that this is uh, easier and has been possible in the non-formal education system or in the informal learning environments. It has been much easier in the non-formal education to use different and uh, alternative and maybe innovative assessment methods that are more focused at the needs of the learners. Moving away from grading will be a revolution for education, which we believe would be a very good one that uh, will also make everything that I mentioned before possible uh, to modernize the learning environments. And I think the last message that I, I mentioned also before that is very important is to look at education as a place and space where we uh, create knowledge and not only acquire and transfer knowledge. And that is a mindset shift that is necessary, especially for teachers, professors, uh, and very important for lifelong learning uh, because people come with knowledge, skills, and attitudes that should be valued in order to create new knowledge. Um, and I think that was all from my side. I tried to, to bring some of the key messages uh, that we work on, we are still thinking and we are still wandering around them in lifelong learning platform. Uh, there is no uh, solution at the moment, uh, but there are a lot of good practices around Europe that we can learn from. And I believe that by uh, cooperating and working more together and by organizing these type of events um, to share uh, our ideas, uh, we will actually help education system and, and training systems to uh, modernize and improve improve and create these new learning environments that are more fit for this green and digital transition. Thank you very much. And the very last slide is for our contact details. Uh, very glad that I could uh, share with you um, some of our insights. Thank you. Thanks a lot to you, Brigena. And I'm just trying to type um, the link you shared there, policy at LLL platform.com was it dot eu right dot eu yes exactly and i'll share that in the chat right away um, thank you wonderful and um, thanks a lot for all these insights i have a first question for you already coming from the chat annette asks what is basic skills for you how would you define it currently oh yeah uh, it's it's a tricky uh, question i mean there is a lot of um of work done on that, uh, what to define what are basic skills, but what well, the most common, let's say, are literacy, numeracy. Um, well, there is still um, wondering about whether this is enough. So there are um, uh, organizations like the European Network on Basic Skills that is working on a, on a much larger list of, uh, uh, let's say, basic skills that goes beyond the literacy and the numeracy uh, ones. Um, especially for the adult population. But uh, yeah, I, I would say these are the basics to start with. Um, uh, next question is a very technical one. Um, sorry I came late, Paulus says, um, is it possible to get the slides or the recording? Um, from my end, the recording will go live. On the main stage, it takes a little bit longer than on the other stages, but I think by the end of the day, latest tomorrow, you can rewatch it on demand on the platform here, uh, later on on YouTube as well. And um, of course, you can reach out to Rikina via the email address I just posted. Um, quick question, last question maybe. Um, before we round things off, Priki, now how do you get the people actually there? I mean, a lot of people might have the need to actually work on their lifelong learning, but um, not the motivation or the knowledge that they actually can do so. So how do you enlist people on these platforms? Um, yeah, that's what I said indeed, that it's very difficult uh, 
to indeed motivate people um, and also yeah, make information accessible that they can actually work on lifelong learning. Uh, one way is obviously to look uh, at our platform website and our members' websites where you can have different opportunities also to engage with different organizations. Uh, it's still a, a rather new when it comes to national level or local level developments on lifelong learning. You do have a lot of community uh, centers uh, on lifelong learning, but a lot, a few, I would say, not a lot. So uh, I think more should be developed. Um, and I think this will also come closer to the people because one of the things we always repeat, and it's, it's very important, it's not only about motivating people, it's also about uh, making it accessible and making it accessible for some means go closer where to where people are so um get closer to the those that are interested to indeed get involved in lifelong learning thank you and i guess uh, the most difficult challenge then is actually to let those know who do not know that they don't know enough that they should join the platform but that's next level then so thanks yes. a lot for joining us Plikina. i hope a lot of thank people you. will use the email address um, to follow up on it and also of course to check out the platform um thanks a lot have a wonderful thank you to afternoon you. Bye, thank you.